You smoke a lot of marijuana. Yeah. How often do you smoke these days? Shit, I've been trying to cut it down for real, man. I've been trying to just, just clear my mind for real, get on some real positive focus shit because just been a lot of shit going on, you know, everyday life type shit. Mm. We, every time I smoke weed, I get through off, or if I don't get through off, I get extra creative. So it's either one or the other. I see. Just smoke marijuana? Yeah, I used to sip heavy lean so much, uh, too much of that shit. You've quit lean altogether? Yeah, I mean, I drunk a cup, you know, if somebody, like yesterday, we got high on Kirkwood. Mm. <laughs> so you had a sip? Yeah. So you're not uh, all the way uh, quit, but? No, from what I used to do, everybody know. I'm all the way, like, you could say it, hell yeah. I don't wake up and crave it no more like I used to. Ah. Uh. I, I don't see. call around looking for the shit like, hey, bro, you found some lean. I don't got to do that no more. But if it's around, you may yeah. indulge. I'm, I might not. You never know, depending on what's, the, you know, what's, what's going on. When it comes to marijuana, are you trying to quit or just smoke No, I ain't going to quit. I'm okay. just trying to smoke less. Okay. Hell yeah. And smoke better. Favorite Sorry. strain you enjoy? Right now, it's, it's the runs. Yeah, my man's LB gave me that runts, man. Why that one in particular? Because there's a whole bunch man. of different names, whole different flavors out there, different strains. Why does I was that out there. To you? That was it. When I was out there, I tasted a couple strands, but that runts and that um, biscotti, that shit was the best. I ain't gonna lie. Man. How do you smoke them? In the backwood. Yeah. What flavor? Shit, whatever flavor, except for that purple shit. Do you remember the first time you smoked marijuana ever? Mm hmm Can you take us back to that moment, how old you were, where you were at, that sort of thing? I was, uh, I was like 13. I was like 12, 13 years old. And then my homeboy across the street from me, I don't know where he learned this shit from, but he, he uh, carved an apple and he made a bong out of it and he was at the park and he was like, he was kind of like two, three years older than me. Okay. I used to run with him every day, just be with him. He like, hit this. My mama caught me and shit. Yeah. And then after that, it was just all alone. I couldn't roll up, so I used to unpack the, um, I used to unpack the Black and Miles. And then pack them back up with the weed. Mm -hmm. But it would be bullshit weed. Back then, that first time you smoked, do you remember what strain it was? Reggie's, nigga. I mean, well, you know Reggie's. Reggie's, man. That shit was bammer, man. Was it, was it influence exactly that got you to smoke the first time? Was it peer pressure feeling no, or was it no, curiosity? No, it, it, was, it was every day around me. Everything that was around me, like the older people that was around me, I just, right at the school, they'd just be meeting, you know, they'd meet up and smoke their weed and we'd run around and do kid shit. But, you know. That first time you smoked, did you get high? Hell yeah, I got high. Some people don't the first time. They might not I be. I got high. Might not I be had the whole high. real feeling like I had laughed. I ate. I ate some shit that I created some shit. It was a good experience. Yeah, it was, that's why I kept doing it. Some people's experience the first time they get high, that's not very good. Shit. Yeah, it ain't for everybody. Your mom caught you uh, the first time you smoked. Not the first time. Oh, eventually she did. Hell yeah, she caught me. She found out I was smoking that shit. She she started knowing because I'm thinking I'm not smelling like it after I smoke it. I'm thinking it's over. I wash my hands. You know, I didn't know that shit was with the... reeking on you. Exactly. I ain't know nothing about reeking back then. <laughs> I ain't know nothing about. You didn't reeking. know about. That cologne smell. Man, I ain't know. <laughs> that scent of cologne that. there. Man. Now, how was her reaction? Upset? Disappointed? Punished you? Shh, no, I never did. It was never no punishment. Never that. I don't know. She was kind of like the honest mom, man. She, she rather me do it and, and let her know I was going to do it than go sneak somewhere and get laced or something. Shit, you mm. know, trying to smoke with anybody and do the shit. 
So she was actually okay with you smoking? Not at that age, hell no. But by the time I got older, you know, I got older and got responsible, hell yeah, she ain't never care. I see. You mentioned at the top of this segment that you're not quitting, but you are smoking less. Are you addicted? Hell yeah, to weed. <laughs> I'm addicted to weed. I, right now, I can't eat if I was <laughs> I can't eat shit for real. I, I might nibble on something, but I can't really sit down and eat for real. It's the longest you went without it. I'm addicted. Long as I went without it. Yeah. I went a long time without it. That's probably why I smoke a lot right now. I just was not going through it. I had a bad accident. I had a trach in my throat. I was fucked up bad. I couldn't smoke shit. I couldn't smoke after that. Both of my lungs collapsed. I broke 22 ribs, man. I was fucked up. Small, man. I ain't gonna lie. I couldn't smoke a nothing, bro. I couldn't think about smoking shit. I couldn't talk. Did that accident have to do with anything in regards to drugs? Yeah. Man, them damn Zannies, man. Zannies and them Percocets, man. And that lean, dog, all in one. Just going to the extreme, abusing that shit, man. That's what got me in that predicament. So what happened exactly? I fell asleep going 70 miles per hour. By yourself in the car? By myself in the car. I just dropped somebody off. That was the last thing I remember. Mm. Do you remember exactly what it is that you, like how much you took or? I remember I was off probably like, that day I probably, Man, I was off probably like 10 pills, but it was it was all, I was kept mixing. You know, I would take a perk. I'd, later on, I'd take a Xanax. I'd take another half of Xanax. It, it was just an ongoing thing, and I was drinking lean. And, man, I even took a, some champagne, and you know, that night just was a blur. That shit was just was too much, bro. Was this the most you've ever taken of yeah. these amount of Hell yeah, drugs in this concoction? Yeah, I mean, up into that accident, small. I can't lie, that whole month, or month and a half, I was tripping. I was kind of like overdoing it. It was like to the point where Granny and my mama would be like, "Hey, you gotta slow down. That shit mm. got you, you know, got you all over the place. You gotta slow down." What got you to that point initially from the first place? Like taking that much of these drugs? I mean, you got to, you gotta think, dog. Um, Street niggas or niggas who in the streets for real firsthand, you go through a lot of shit. You gotta cope that pain. You gotta just keep it moving. You can't really be trying to dwell on that shit or be no weak ass nigga, man, sitting in no corner crying. You gotta just smoke your weed and keep it moving. So I feel like that's why niggas do sip they lean and do pop their pills because they be tired of that shit that be going on, bro. And that and that's their outlet. Like that's they they pop that pill and they don't worry about that shit they baby mama tripping on or they don't worry about that shit that they bitch or they you know they niggas rapping about their ear it's just it's a getaway from the shit that's really going on and then they gotta face reality and that's why they do it again you get, and run to the store and get another pop you get what I'm saying it's that same feeling they wanna stay at that state mm. that's how I was I was battling my inner shit that I was going through and that, and that was my way to get through what I was going through, you know, the deaths that I witnessed and shit like that, the people I watched pass away and, you know, go to jail and shit like that, bro. I just, you know, we get high and that shit just, that's what caught the pain, man. You must have been going through something really tough at that time because I'm sure you don't just start taking this amount when you're first on lean no, or Xanax? I'm half, that's my half white side, though, Smalls. I am half white. I'm black, but I'm half white, though, so I do it. I do a little more. I do take it to the next level. Mm. So I was doing more than my friends or my peers. But were you going through a particular time in your life where just you had to deal with whatever you were going through with this amount? Yeah, I had just lost my cousin. A nigga that I was with every single day, like every day, and I had left and went out of town and did some shit. And when I was out of town, he got killed, and I was supposed to come back home and fuck with him and, and just losing track of time. I ain't never get back to fuck with him, and mm. I was already doing appeal, you know, just fucking with him. It just got to the point where I was, that was an everyday thing. 
I see. So you're by yourself on a stretch of highway? No, not a highway. I was on the street on a residential, uh, turning on the main street where I'm from, Seven Mile Road. And I, um, this was late at night? Yeah, it was late at night, probably like 2 33 in the morning. And I was, shit, I, I thought I was fine when I was at home. You know, I went outside. I don't know what the hell I went outside for. I had already made it home. I had changed clothes and everything and went back out the door at 2 in the morning, man. Got in an accident as soon as I went back out the door. You hit another car? Or you hit, hit another car face first, face, face to face. I flew out the car 50 feet. No seatbelt. Man. See that? That shit real, man. Didn't have a seatbelt on. Nope, that's what saved my life. He said if I would have had a seatbelt on, I would have broke my neck. Wow. From the impact. Hell yeah, that shit was real. You went through the windshield? No, I went through the driver's window. I flew to the back first and then flew out. I don't know how to, that's how I broke my ribs. Cause I crushed, I got crushed. The mm. steering wheel had, had broke me down. You know, it's like a football. They said the way it hit me was like a football player running full speed with their helmet and you uh. ain't got on no equipment. You get what I'm saying? I ain't have on no equipment and, and it crushed my whole rib cage. We got 24 ribs, I broke 22. Mm. Yeah, I was in a uh, coma for nine days. When I got out of the coma, I was in ICU for like four months three and a half months straight. Then I had, you know, I just had to go through everything over again, you know, learn how to get my voice back. That shit was tough, though. That shit was tough. What happened to the person you hit? Bro, they left me, bro. They left me on the scene. They didn't even, they ended up suing me later on. I don't know what they do. You know how people is. They ended up finding somebody to sue me or some shit, but they left me on the scene thinking I died. Because I ain't gonna lie, they thought I died. They had my car, um, the fatal unit. It was crushed up like a can of pop. It was, every window was out of the car. Every window was busted out the car. And shit, I was just fucked up, bro. I, but I was internally bleeding, though. I went outside. Nothing on the outside was bleeding like that, but my head, but inside was all fucked up. And they, they left me, bro. I never knew what happened to them, bro. That shit crazy. I, you know? So you never even knew who you hit? I don't even know who I hit, bro. But you did end up becoming part of a lawsuit. I ain't never fuck with it. Damn, shit. Hmm. <laughs> Damn, I, what can I? Well, I almost died, man. Shit, we even. So, if they left you, um, did they even call 911 about it? Is that how people got to you? No. Damn. I don't know who called 911. I just know somebody called my homeboy, bro, and he got there and he signed me off to the ambulance because they wasn't going to sign me off to the ambulance until somebody knew my name, you know, like could tell me who I was. Mm. Identify me as my, he would say he was my, he had to tell him he was my cousin and tell him he knew where I, you know, where I stayed. Then they took me to the hospital. This was a- 2015. Uh, this was a medically induced coma? Like they had to put you in a coma? No, or? I was in a coma. You okay. were in the coma. From the right. accident, I, I came there in a coma. Mm. I was, they said I was so sedated already from the, from the pills and shit I was on. That's another thing that saved me. Me being in a calm, natural state, I didn't tense up when uh -huh. I got in the accident. I didn't freeze, you get what I'm saying? I just was so loose. It just was like, it is what it is. You wake up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With lights like this in my face. Yes, do you remember that moment you actually wake up? Yeah, my mama's finger was in my hand. Oh. Huh. And, I, and she said every day for nine days straight, she would put her finger in my hand to see if I would, she would just fuck with my hand. And she said one day I just woke up and I squoze her shit so hard. She said she screamed. That's when the nurse came and she was like, he up, nah, it's on. That's when they, you know, started going to work. They put the trach in me and everything. I imagine you had tubes. Everywhere. Yeah. 
everywhere. You I weren't trying hose. to rip them out or anything like that? I grabbed the IV. That's the only thing I grabbed. That's the only thing I could grab before they um, put me back. You know, they had to mm. restrain me back down to the bed because it was too much going on. I had neck brace on, all type of shit, man. You literally don't remember anything? I literally thought somebody had shot me up, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I wrote on the, I wrote down. When I realized I couldn't talk, I just started crying, though. I ain't gonna lie. Oh. Because I was so frustrated. I, I, when I tried to say something and it ain't come out, I was I didn't know what the fuck had happened. I just was like, what the fuck? And they explained to me, like, no, you didn't get shot. You got in an accident and you you fucked up this time. Like, they that's all they could say was you fucked up this time. So... Before you even wake up, was there a chance doctors told your mom or something? That I was going to pass away, that I wasn't going to be able to make it. it I had um, both of my lungs collapsed. My liver had got, um, I don't know if it was the proper word for it, but it had got from my ribs cracking. It punctured it? Cut it, it yeah, it had punctured it from, man, it was bad, bro. I had three blood transfusions. Uh. Um, shit, I was on the, um, the, what's that, not the incubator, um, what's Dialysis? The, the ventilator. I mean, oh, ventilator? Yeah. Breathing for me, the breathing machine. Ah. Uh -huh. Man, I was fucked up, bro. I had, it started off as like a big trach, and they traked it down, you know, they made it down, they put it down. Was there a chance you would never be able to talk again? That's what they said, but mm -hmm. I was like, hey, I can't do it. Even if I had to use the thing off the commercial where I had to press the, you know. Oh, I, yeah. I was using that. Oh, like how, like a, somebody with a smoker yeah, uh, yeah. has emphysema Bingo. or cancer Bingo. or something? Bingo. Bingo. I got that scar like them. Mm -hmm. Right here, I got that scar like them. Why did you have to stay in ICU for so long? You said three months, right? Because my, my ribs was broke, my lungs was collapsed. I couldn't breathe on my own. It was nothing I could do to breathe on my own. So the trach, I guess all that took, the, that's what the process was, me yeah. having a trach in my throat and that breathing for me and pump, getting my lungs back to the, so I can go back, you know, and do it on my own. Then eventually they took me off the machine. I stayed in there for like 20 days, breathing on this little thing, this plastic thing, <sighs> make the ball go up. Yeah. It just was like they they was doing lung exercises and shit like that on me and all type of shit. Were you recovering faster than expected? Hell yeah, bro. Like people be asking me all the time, like, bro, how the fuck did you do that? Like, bro, some people, bro, smalls. If you knew, if you would have been able to see me, like in the hospital, then you would know that I wasn't just I ain't over exaggerating and nothing. I was fucked up, bro. They didn't think I was just gonna be walking around like a year later, you get what I'm saying? Or a year and a half later, all the way, right. I was on a walker for like six months though, I ain't gonna lie. I couldn't do it on my own for a long time. And then I start putting the walker to the side and using the wall and trying to use more of my strength. And that's what kind of got me right. So you had to learn how to talk again? No, I had to learn how to talk and I had to learn how to carry myself, if that makes any sense. I had to learn how to carry myself again. My upper half was all crushed. My bottom half was A-OK. -okay. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I could stand, I, well, I thought I could stand up because my legs wasn't fucked up, but my whole everything above my waistline was all crushed from the accident. So I was kind of like, damn. That shit was a learning experience for sure. So did you have to learn how to walk again or no? No, I had okay. to learn how to carry yourself just, and talk. Right, again. I had to learn how to stand up, bro. I couldn't mm. stand up on my own. I would have to, I would fall like I would crumble. I ain't had no support. You know what's also uh, amazing in this whole accident? The fact that you didn't lose any limbs. Man. I you were crushed, that. but bro. you didn't lose any limbs. There's people that get into a car accident and, and lose an arm or leg. Something, something. Everything works fine. <sighs> Shit, A-OK -okay to me. Oh, it's all right. How far into it in this three month, three and a half month stint of you being in the hospital before you could actually talk again though and get your voice back? Mm. 
Man, it was, I, I couldn't talk when I got out the hospital. Oh, you couldn't? Nope, I had it all. I was still having to use that thing. I had to press down. Oh, I see. And then, and then when they took it out completely, it was like, it was like, you get, and then I, it went up, you know? Hmm. Eventually it got higher and higher and higher. How long did physical therapy? I didn't even have physical therapy. Even the carrying yourself part? I had a, um, I had bed rest, that's it. I wow. had bed rest. They, they gave me a walker and they put me in bed rest and they told me I couldn't be walking. Just, just lay down and take your medicine, man. Do what you gotta do. And take yourself around, like, laps of the house. You know, get up and take laps around the house. Walk back and forth. Don't just stay in that bed laying there to get stiff, you know. How long was the whole entire recovery process to get back to normal for you after you left the hospital? You were in the hospital three, three and a half months. But after that point, how it much happened longer? October 30 of 2015. Probably by June again, I was all the way standing up straight without the walk. You get what I'm saying? Like all the way back right again, like walking on my own, not doing that, opening the door. No, I don't need nobody to open the door for me. None of that shit. Like I was probably driving. I was trying to drive. That shit had me so, so nervous and so, man, driving. That shit was... Damn there, I want. I ain't want to drive. I was getting an Uber or something, but yeah. that shit was kind of like I'm like, fuck. You are driving now. Yeah, hell yeah, drive like everybody. Not scared to drive. Uh, hell yeah. Down here. Oh hell yeah, in Atlanta. Whew, I ain't driving, bro. Now, did you follow doctor's orders or did you bend the rules? I bent the rules. You did. Sometimes uh, when people bend the rules, they might not recover 100%. Some things may be wrong still or... Grandma told me that, man. She told me that. Do you have any effects because you didn't, because you bent the rules, I should say? Besides standing up for a long period of time, yeah. That shit get to burning, my back get to burning, man. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Are those the only uh, side That's effects it. you have at this point? That's it. Now, throughout this whole ordeal, how soon before you had sex for the first time? I had, I ain't gonna lie, I had got some head in bed rest. I bust in one second, as soon as she put her lips, as soon as she touched that motherfucker, I bust, I ain't gonna lie. How soon was this when you got home? You get home from the hospital, how soon was this in there? Probably like a week after I got home, I got some head. Couldn't wait? Yeah, I could wait, but shit, it was just it was it, it worked. I seen that motherfucker work because it was it couldn't get it. I ain't gonna lie, I couldn't. I, it wasn't working. I couldn't get it. I ain't had no. I ain't had no feeling. But at this point, you're not numb anywhere, are you? Hell no. Nah. Nope. Now, what about music? Where did that play into any of this time that you were recovering? Man, when I got out the accident, I had made this song. It's a song I'm actually using as my single right now. It's called Supposed to Be Here. And I made it on a walker. And I made the song at one of the worst periods of my life. You know, I was just had it got broken down and trying to see what was next. And I did this song produced by a hell of a out of Detroit. And it was just my whole life at that time right there and it just explained everything. And if you listen to the song right now, it sounds like I made it yesterday. You get what mm. I'm saying? Or can make it yesterday. That's how, I, you know, real it was. How long was it before you actually recorded that song? As soon as I was able to talk, like I ran to the studio, bro. Like when I was able to pitch my voice and get this shit Going back for real, like I was practicing that shit the whole time. I was down, but my motivation went all the way 100 when I got back right. And I was feeling myself a little bit. I'm like, okay, I'm standing up straight. I gotta go record something. I gotta get this situation off my mind. You know, I had to go run to the booth. 
So you didn't bring the booth to you? You didn't have some sort of... Nope, I had went to the booth on a walker. I went to meet hell of a... And me and hell of a sat in there and he was just like, bro, I, he called me first, like, bro, I got something for you. Explain the whole accident. You know, he like, I, I got it. You're supposed to be here. Like, I got it. And when I got there, it was that. So you went to an actual studio and knocked it out. Yeah. Went to actual... Why not have some sort of home studio contraption I mean... put together just... To hold you down while you were in the Because I was already state. out. I was out there. I was like, when I had got, by that time, I was out in the streets again, you know, trying to ride around, you know, in the car. Just ride around. I had my walker with me. I was just trying not to be in the house, laid up in that bed. So oh. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to knock this shit out. Were you rusty? Nope. If you listen to it, it's number two on my CD. You're going to listen to it if you ever, when you give it a spin, you know, check me out. What it, CD is this for people watching that aren't familiar? Uh, Relentless. Relentless right here. GT Relentless, man. It's out now on all digital platforms. Now, what about making a public appearance? What about performing for the first time? When uh, I, how long before you, you did these type of things? When I performed for the first time, when I got out the accident, um, it was kind of like my homeboy, he kind of like forced me to do like some welcome back type shit, you know, like, but I did it for him. It was kind of like, it was probably like two or three months. I wasn't even going to the club. I was like, fuck the club. Cause it's too much. I can't be in a club. My body was, at the time, was real fragile, so I was like, damn, one false move, one bump, yeah. you know, one anything. I don't want to fall in front of nobody, you get what I'm saying? I ain't trying to be falling and shit like that. So I was staying out the club. Now, uh, you did mention a lawsuit earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but aside from that, this hospital stay... Uh, was a bankroll. This recovery, uh, insurance. yes. Medical bills. Did Man, you have health insurance? insurance? Hell yeah. You already had insurance before. Hell yeah. Now, we're not talking the car insurance. We're talking health insurance coverage. Right. You already Hell had Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That wasn't my first. I done been, I done had hernias, all type of shit, man. Uh, so I done been in and out. You know, I done been to the hospital quite a few times. So... You still have to, even though you do have health insurance, even though you do have, you had a car insurance? Mm -hmm. No, at the time, man, I was so high. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, t I was so high, bro. I ain't even look at the expiration date, probably. <laughs> I just was driving the car, hopping in, pulling off. At that time, I was just, I wasn't giving a fuck about no insurance. You know? That was higher than the damn, uh, that shit was so high, man. In Detroit, the insurance, that shit sky high, bro. So this was expensive, I imagine. Yeah, hell yeah. It was expensive for sure. Still is, this shit still costs me money right now. Even after everything's said and done? Even, even... after, even just, just, uh, just shit, bro. Like, it cost me money because I can't do shit I want to do because of the, you know, the shit on my, like the accident and shit on my name, that shit ain't good, bro. Them drugs, man, stay away from them bitches, man. Uh, is it hard to get car insurance after something like this? Hell yeah, they want to charge you extra. Nah, they want to charge you double damn there. Mm. Cause shit, they know you. And I ain't, yeah, nobody hit me, I hit them, so it's fucked up on my end, you get what I'm saying? Has this changed your outlook on life? Yes. In what ways? I know you just gave us man, the uh, around drug that advice. time, man, dog. I got in an accident while my baby mama was pregnant. You get what I'm saying? She was like eight months pregnant, seven months pregnant. So I was kind of like fucked up, bro. I was first, man. I was just upset, bro, with with myself, and I know I feel. I feel without my mission. You know my mission out here is to, you know, make it home safe, man, every day. And I ain't do it that day, bro. And that shit, 
my grandma and mama and that started them, bro. You get what I'm saying? That shit'll fuck up everything. So did you actually miss the birth of the child? Mm-mm. I missed it pumping the gas. He came out in five minutes, bro. I missed it pumping the gas, but I was right there as soon as he was born, though. I pulled right up to the hospital. Now, even after this accident, mm -hmm. um, you do still smoke marijuana. Yeah. You're done with the pills? Mm-hmm. Pills, man, them bitches, man. Anybody taking Xanax, man, please uh, stop that shit, man. That shit, that shit lame, bro. For real, man. That shit, that shit don't have you acting like yourself, man. If you ever think you do, bro, if you off those, I'm telling you, you don't, bro. For real, bro, you don't. That shit will never have you acting like yourself, bro. 